Decoding the Secret Language of Disneyland. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video is part of my series on Disneyland. You'll find more of my Disneyland videos, links in the description below or at the end of this video. But in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 25 phrases you absolutely need to know when you come to Disneyland. I'll share with you some phrases that the employees say to each other when they wanna talk and have you not know about what they're saying. And third, I'll share with you some phrases that you will never hear a Disneyland employee say within the park. The first thing you need to know is about how to refer to the employees, and the employees in Disneyland parks are not called employees, they're called cast members. This owes to the fact that Disney always considered the theme park and inside the theme park to be a show. And so when the cast members are in the public areas of the park, they are actually on stage. Oh, and number two, the uniform that they're wearing, it's not a uniform, it's a costume. And there's a third type of employee, the Imagineers. The Imagineers are the engineers and the artists that come up and design the rides and design the experiences that you see. The Imagineers generally work in an office building, not in the Disneyland theme park itself. So now that we know how they refer to the employees, how do they refer to you, the customers? You are not a customer, you are their guests. Just like the Disney song, be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. By the way, I'm not gonna start a music channel, don't worry. But the fifth phrase to know is treasured guest. You do not want to be a treasured guest. It is rumored that Disneyland employees, when they want to introduce you to another Disneyland employee as a troublesome guest or someone who might be slightly irritated or problemsome, in that case, they will introduce you as, can you please assist our treasured guest? Number six, magical moments. These are best described as random acts of kindness between cast members and guests. This happened to me once I was in Disney's California Adventure. I was in front of Toy Story Midway Mania and it was under construction and they had moved the fast passes like a quarter mile away in the park. I was clearly very disappointed. A cast member noticed uh, and this cast member pulled out their uh, smart device and issued me a fast pass just for the ride to be a magical moment and that random act of kindness. Number seven, backstage. I mentioned that when cast members are in the park, they are on stage. So when cast members are backstage, they are essentially anywhere that guests can't go. But sometimes Disney's actually been opening some of the backstage areas to guests. If the park is really busy, then on Main Street, they'll actually open up the backstage areas of Main Street back behind the shops for people to walk down. And when you walk down there, it really does look like it's backstage because those buildings that you see on Main Street, they're really just a facade. It looks exactly like a theatrical stage. Number eight, rope drop. This is the equivalent of park opening. If you hear somebody talking about rope drop, that's the time when the park opens. This happens on certain days in Disneyland where they let guests in 30 minutes early. The cast members literally hold a rope. Guests stand behind the rope and at park opening time, they drop the rope and then guests can walk quickly to the rides they want to go on, but they walk behind cast members that actually work at those rides, so that way there's no running, and it's actually a pretty orderly way to start the day. Number nine, extra magic hour, sometimes abbreviated EMH. If you are staying at a hotel on the Disneyland property, well then you can typically get into one of the two parks one hour early. This sounds like a good deal, and it's good for about that one hour, but then I'll say, generally the park that has the extra magic hour is actually busier the entire day because that's where all the Disneyland Resort guests are staying. So if you're coming and you're not staying at one of the Disneyland hotels, I'd actually encourage you to go to the other park than the one that has the extra magic hour that day. Number 10, park hopper. A park hopper is not a type of insect like a grasshopper. It's a certain type of ticket. By default, tickets that you buy for Disneyland are good for entrance to only one of the theme parks per day. Disneyland or Disneyland California Adventure. By the way, I'm gonna start abbreviating Disneyland California Adventure as DCA. So if you buy a park hopper ticket, then you can go into both parks, Disneyland and DCA, on the same day. They cost you a little 
little more money, but they're a bit more flexible because you can ride Space Mountain in the morning and then you can see World of Color at night on the same day. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the words that go along with the characters at Disneyland. You'll see lots of Disneyland cast members dressed up in costume as characters, and the characters come in two varieties. There are fuzzy characters and face characters. So first let's talk about the fuzzy characters. Fuzzy characters are ones that are dressed in full costume, including a mask. Think like Mickey, Minnie, Donald Duck, any character that you cannot see the cast member's face. Fuzzy characters, they never speak, and they are generally out in the park for less time because it's much hotter in that costume. So if you want to take a picture or greet a fuzzy character, get on that when you see them because they might be gone quickly. The second type of character is a face character, and these are things like the princesses, Cinderella, where you can actually see their face. The face characters will actually talk to you. And there's a character escort. A character escort is attached to every Every character that's in the park. The character escort is the person who takes them where they're supposed to be. The character escort is the person who might hold your camera to take a picture with them. And the character escort helps keep things orderly around the character meet and greets. And there's one more phrase to go along with characters. It's character dining. If you see a restaurant that advertises character dining, what that means is that while you are dining at this restaurant, cast members in costume as characters will show up to the restaurant, mill about, generally greet you and be in character in the restaurant. If you've never done character dining before, I think it's worthwhile to go at least once. The restaurants that offer it are typically more expensive because you have to imagine the money that you're paying for the food, you're also paying for those cast members to be dressed up in costume as the characters, but it's pretty fun to have these people come up to your table, interact with you, and just be sitting there eating and you're like, oh, there's Chippendale. Oh look, there's Mickey, there's Pluto, there's Donald. It's a fun way to have a meal. Okay, now let's talk about some of the Disneyland language related to rides, and number 15 is e-ticket attraction. What's an e-ticket attraction? It is one of the best attractions in Disneyland. This phrase harkens back to an earlier day in Disneyland's history when guests used to have to buy tickets or coupons for specific rides in certain categories. The cheapest were A tickets and the most expensive were E tickets. So when someone refers to an E ticket attraction, they're typically talking about something like Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, the big rides, the best rides, the ones that everybody wants to go on. Phrase 16, e-stop, not to be confused with e-ticket. An e-stop happens when a ride is malfunctioning or there's some danger and they need to cause an emergency stop. This will also happen if there's an earthquake or in the case of a natural disaster. You'll pretty much know if there's an e-stop because the house lights will come on and they'll likely be directing you to get off the ride. Number 17, dark rides. You'll hear some of the rides at Disneyland referred to as dark rides. And what's a dark ride? It's essentially a indoor ride that has a vehicle on a track. Something like Winnie the Pooh's Adventure or Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Also things that aren't classified as roller coasters. These are the classic rides of Disneyland. You'll find most of them in the Fantasyland area. Number 18, Fast Pass. This is essentially a one hour guaranteed window to get on a ride without having to wait in a super long line. The corollary to Fast Pass is standby. If you see entrances to rides that say standby, the standby entrance is the entrance where you're gonna wait generally a long time, and the Fast Pass entrance is the one where when you've got that Fast Pass that you picked up at a ride earlier, then it gives you a one hour window to come back to that ride and ride it with a fairly short wait in that one hour window. In addition to standby lines, there's a single rider line, and then there's also a special way to get fast passes called Max Pass. For those two things, I'm gonna introduce some fellow explorers to tell you about those. Hey, I'm Steve from uh, Silverdale, Washington, my son Zach, and we have taken advantage of the Max Pass and the single rider uh, things here. Those are two words, two pieces of lingo that you're gonna need to know coming to uh, California Adventure Disneyland. We were able to get on Cars Ride using the Max Pass uh, this morning and immediately after got in the single rider line and we were riding it a second time 10 minutes after we rode it the first time. We were able to get on, did the same thing with uh, Goofy's, uh, Goofy Sky School uh, using the single rider. You can get in line while you're in line for one ride, use the Max Pass to get a, a Flex Pass for another ride at the same time. Helpful not to have to walk around the park going to the places getting a Flex Pass, just to do it right in line and whenever the time runs out, it's been a good day. And thanks to Chris for his videos. 
Okay, and so to be clear, MaxPass and FastPass, they're two different things. MaxPass, you can add on to your daily ticket for like $15 a day, or you can add it on to your annual pass for $100, and MaxPass allows you to get fast passes from your phone without having to go to the ride. It is definitely a huge time saver, so if you're gonna spend a few days here in the park and you have a smartphone, I would recommend that you add the MaxPass option so you can get those fast passes much quicker. You'll also find some rides that offer child swap, rider swap, baby switch, they call it a few different things, but basically what this allows parents to do is if there's two parents and they've got some kids and the kids can't go on the ride, well, they can both get in line together and kind of swap out as they get towards the front of the line so that both parents can ride the ride, but they don't have to wait in line twice. If you want to take advantage of rider switch, baby switch, baby swap, ask one of the cast members at the front of the ride. You can find the list on the Disneyland website for all the rides that have this option. Disneyland has a couple more passes not to be confused with the Fast Pass or the Max Pass. This next one, number 23, is the Photo Pass. If you hear the word Photo Pass, it's not really a pass. Photo Pass more refers to the service by which Disneyland has photographers that stand around at some of the major attractions and they will take your picture. You can give them your park ticket, they scan it, it links to your Disneyland account, then you can go to the Disneyland website and download the pictures that you want to buy of the pictures they took for you. If you bought Max Pass, that $15 a day option, then you will get Photo Pass pictures for free the day that you had Max Pass. Yeah, confusing enough. Number 24, Annual Pass, often abbreviated AP. You'll see people with magnets on their cars that say AP. Those are annual pass holders. Annual Pass, that's the ticket you get all year for Disneyland. By the way, they are really expensive. Sometimes the people that have annual passes are called lifestylers. Lifestylers are people who come to the parks often not to go on any rides but just to kind of walk around it's part of their lifestyle maybe see the new things myself and OC girl you could probably consider us lifestylers because you'll find us at the park Friday night 6 p.m. Sundays are we here to ride a ride maybe maybe one maybe go see the frozen so but mostly just to experience the park maybe make a couple videos when you hear the term nighttime spectacular, that refers to one of Disney's big nighttime shows, like the biggest show they have in the park. And there's typically just one in each park. At Disney California Adventure, right now it's World of Color that happens right here on this lake in the middle of California Adventure. And over in Disneyland, it is fantastic. So if you're here and you're here at night and you wanna know what the one big show to watch is, it's the nighttime spectacular. Okay, so those are all the basic vocabulary things you need to know to be fluent in Disney. Disneyland ease. Now let's talk about some of the secret codes that cast members use to communicate with each other when maybe they don't want you to know what they're talking about. If you hear a cast member call out code V, that means there's been vomit someplace and somebody needs to come and clean it up. There's a couple of these other letter codes. There's code P and U. These are used interchangeably. U stands for urine. This is what happens when somebody gets a little too excited or scared on a ride and the urine needs to be cleaned up. There's one more letter code that you might hear. This one's code H. What's H stand for? Horse poop. This means there's horse poop in the park that needs to be cleaned up. And yes, this happens too. Now I mentioned there's a few phrases that you will never hear a cast member say inside a Disneyland theme park. And the first one of these phrases is that a ride is closed or broken. You will never hear them say a ride is closed or broken. They are trained to tell you that this attraction is temporarily unavailable. But there are some numbered codes that they'll use over the radio to communicate just how broken that ride is. If you hear a cast member radio that an attraction is code 100, that means that the attraction is closed all day unexpectedly. Code 101 means that the ride is closed and a hope to reopen it. This could often be caused by a code V, P, or U. Something happened and they need to clean it up before they can reopen the ride. Code 102, that's a ride operating as expected. And code 104, that signals a ride that has been closed is reopening. And why this code? Well, because if you heard over some radios or you heard cast members talking about a ride that's been closed, it's just reopening, that would likely cause a stampede of guests to go 
there, that's why they use this code. Oh, and if you hear a signal 70, that means there's a lost parent in the park. By the way, children or kids, they are never lost. It is always the parents that are lost. So now that you know the lingo and the secret codes, let's talk about some things that you will never hear the cast members say at Disneyland. You will never hear cast members say the word timeshare. There are no timeshares at Disneyland or Disney World. There's just the Disney Vacation Club. I think timeshare has a negative connotation, so the staff is instructed never to use the word timeshare when selling you into the Disney Vacation Club. And the final thing you will never hear a cast member say are the three words together, I don't know. If you ask a cast member a question, they are not allowed to answer I don't know. If they truly don't know the answer, they need to find the answer for you and that would uh, require them to ask another cast member who does know or perhaps even call somebody. So if you're planning a trip to Disneyland, make sure to watch some of my other videos in my Disneyland series. You'll find them right here and right here. Links in the description below as well. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.